and hello again. Uh, it's been a while. I hope you guys had a pleasant holiday season and a very happy new year. Uh, uh, we're gonna hopefully uh, tie up the whole mode thing. There's just one little more step and that is the ability to detect what mode you're in. Now the more chords you have in a progression, the more likely you'll be able to determine what mode you're in. Um, there's a few principles before we get started that you should be aware of. If we took uh, the key of C at the top of the circle of fifths and then just went just to the left, which is your right at this point, uh, if you went just to the left and found the key of F and just to the right and found the uh, key of G, C and surrounding it are F and G. These are the neighboring keys, very easy to modulate to, by the way, because the difference between C and F is one note difference. The difference between C and G, one note difference between those two keys. Now, one thing that's important to know is if you take isolate any one chord, let's not talk about the seventh chord, but just major and minor chords right now, a C major chord can be found in three different keys and only three different keys if indeed we are in this first level of the Greek modes. Things change quite considerably in the second level of theory, but once you have the modes really clear and get a feel for them, then it's easier to detect uh, if you're reading a chord chart or whatever, uh, you know, if you're in a mode or if you're using the major minor key system, which of course we haven't really delved into major minor key system there, that's a mountain of stuff. But um, right now we're in the pure Greek modes prior to the days of temperament before scales were tempered. So I can find a C chord, here's the key is of C, F, and G. The key of F is just to the left of C on the circle of fifths, and the key of G is just to the right of C in the circle of fifths. All right, if I take a C chord, you'll notice that I have a C chord in the key of F. If we remove the seventh, it's just C major, and it sits there as the one, two, three, four, five step. And I also have a C chord in the key of G as the four step. So one chord alone does not a mode make. All right, does that make sense? Because if I'm just playing a C chord, am I playing uh, C Ionian, C uh, Lydian, or C Mixolydian? Okay, the f uh, different modes on the different steps. Okay, same thing with minor chords. You'll note, uh, for example, if we took A minor, we could find A minor as the sixth step of C, a minor as the third step of F, and A minor as the second step of G. All right, so one chord alone does not make a mode, but uh, one of the cool things is if you're into messing with scales at all, if you just have a one chord jam, you could play A Aeolian and then switch to A Dorian and then switch to even A, uh, I mean A Phrygian and A Dorian. A Phrygian, yes, I said it's an unlikely and very weak mode, but you could get away with it in that context because only one chord is being pounded on over and over. It's strongly establishing root, even though Phrygian is a very weak root. You could still get by and make it sound Phrygian. Uh, so one chord alone does not determine a mode except and prior to the major minor key system, this is true, each key has its own unique identifier chord that tells you what key you're in, and that is the dominant seventh chord. In other words, in the key of C you have a G7. You will only find the G7 in the key of C in this first level. In the second level, things get hairy because you could find a G7 also in the key of G minor. I mean, uh, a C minor. You could find uh, G7 as the fourth step of... Uh, of D minor in the melodic minor key. Uh, so when we get to the major minor systems, things get a little bit more hairy. The good news is a lot of rock is very modal, uh, so uh, chances are likely that you won't have this problem. We won't be running into this problem a lot, but you will run into it, especially uh, uh, the later rock of the 60s dealt a lot with parallel major chords and changing keys, and this is where I got my whole theory about uh, the parallel relative switch, which I'm very proud of, um, a discovery I made uh, based on the blues. Uh, that will come way, way later. But in any case, okay, so we know that uh, we can find an isolated major chord in only three keys. We could find an isolated minor chord in only three keys, no more, no less. 
okay? So an isolated chord does not tell you what mode you're in. However, the good news is I talked to you, I don't remember which video it's in now, that uh, there are weak modes and strong modes. Let's say more likely modes and less likely modes. And when you're talking about rock music, Phrygian and Lydian are so less likely that they may, may as well be considered negligible as, as far as finding it in a song. The closest Phrygian song I could think of is White Rabbit, but it's not even uh, Phrygian, uh, Jefferson Airplane song, because that first chord is major, not minor. It, uh, it's something I call the Spanish Phrygian, which is based on A harmonic minor, which includes an E chord major and an F major chord as well. All right, I'm getting off the track here. So can you detect a mode then by two, using two chords? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Remember, if there's a seventh chord in that progression, you know, okay? You know what key you're in, you know what mode it is. For example, a lot of uh, Santana music uh, uses the Dorian mode. Let's take something like Evil Ways, which is A minor, We can hear A minor is our root. All right, A minor is our root chord. But one way to check in a two chord progression like this is take your major chord and turn it into a seventh chord and see if it actually sounds okay. Like instead of go A minor to D7. it sounds okay. Now all we got to do in that case is, well, what, what key has a D7 in it? Key of G. There's our A minor. That's our root. Therefore, we are in the second step of the key of G rooted there. The second step of the key of G is A Dorian. Now, here's the fun part is that once you've established your mode, you've also established what key you're coming from, which is the key of G major. When you have an A minor to D7, you could play a G major scale all day to your heart's delight, and it will sound as A Dorian. Because every time that A minor chord comes in, it takes the A note of that G scale and force it, forces it into being a root. So it won't sound like Do, Re, Mi anymore. It'll sound like Re, Mi, Fa. from the key of G, but there's a root. All right. So in that case, A minor, now um, also another way to look at it is like this. Can I find an A minor, which is there, to D7 in the, to D major in the key of uh, C? No. Can I find A minor uh, to D major in the key of F? No. Can I find A minor to D major in the key of G? Yes. Boom. You got it. Okay. So you have to look at neighboring keys in order to determine the mode. And actually, I'm just thinking of this now. It's a, it's a cool technique to use if you really want to <clears throat> investigate, pardon me. If you really want to investigate, whatever your root chord is, if it's a major or minor at least, whatever your root chord is, um, just take that root chord, uh, and as you know, it can be either a 1, a 4, or a 5 in different keys. So in other words, if our root chord is C, it's the 1 chord of C, but it's the 5 chord of F, and it's the 4 chord of G. Well, the 4 chord is a Lydian chord. The Lydian mode is weak, so we eliminate that one. It's not likely that it'll be Lydian, so now you have two choices. You have C mixolydian or C ionian. Okay, uh, so in, in any case, um, let's get to the kind of brain scratchers, okay? What about C to G? What if you have a two chord progression? Notice C is root. Now, here's the tricky part. If we Look, we have a C and a G in the key of C, but we have a C and a G in the key of G, all right? If, um, so, 
right there, okay? Now, the, the important part is to be able to hear root. Root is a mystery. Why, why, do we, why, do we, why does it feel like that chord has resolved? We have no freaking idea. Okay, now, in the key of G, we also have a C chord, right? So what if G is my root? So in the case of two major chords, uh, either a fourth or a fifth apart, uh, it works both ways. Uh, you, all you have to do is hear the root. So if my root is G and I'm playing a C, I play G Ionian. If my root is C and I'm playing a G chord, I'm playing C Ionian. It's that simple. What is my resolution chord? Okay. All right. Uh, so that. Now, when I just discovered moving to the minors is slightly different. And I'm not quite sure why this is yet. I haven't really geeked it out. But let's say... Uh, a minor to D minor, all right? Again, these roots are interchangeable. If A minor is my root, so we look for a key where there's an A minor, and of course there's three of them, all right? Now I just play A minor to D minor. Well, this G is eliminated. There is no D minor in the key of uh, G. So I have the choice of the key of F, A minor to D minor, or the key of C, A minor to D minor. Um, yeah, here's where I get a little flummoxed myself. If A minor, oh, that's the thing. Uh, if A minor is root, okay, you see it here as well in the key of F, A minor to D minor, but look, the third step, that's the Phrygian step not likely, okay? We've already eliminated the key of G because there's no D minor. If A minor is root, it is nearly impossible that it's going to be uh, the Phrygian mode. So boom, you got it. A Aeolian to D minor. Now in the case where D minor is root, You can hear it rooted. D minor to A minor. So again, we have a D minor to A minor in the key of C, and we have a D minor to A minor in the key of F. Okay? Uh, now we're in a situation here where we have two strong roots. D minor in the key of C is strong as Dorian, and D minor in the key of F is strong as Aeolian. So which is it? You don't know. That's the problem. If there was a third chord in there, we'd be able to, to tease out what it is. But in this case, there's no way to know if you're in uh, uh, D Dorian or D Aeolian. There are some situations, in two, there are actually quite a few situations in two chord progressions where you can't decide what the mode is, okay? And that's just the way it is. Um, now, so I already discussed, here's, a, here's an indicator I really like. If you, have, if you have two major chords that are a whole step apart, all right, let's look in the case of the key of C. G is major and F is major, they're a whole step apart, right? And that's, you know, very common uh, chord movement. Um, the kinks, you really got me. F, G, G, F, G, F, G, G, F. And you can hear right away, G's the root, right? Why do you hear it right away? Because it's likely that G would be a root, and it's unlikely, because F is Lydian, that F would be a root. Now, here's the thing. You will find no other instance of two major chords a whole step apart in this key. All right? And you will not find an F and a G in any other key. Here's an, an, F, here's an F, but we have a G minor. Um, there's no F in here, so we can't even think of that one. Well, it's an F sharp, uh, diminished. All right, so that is a great marker. That is a great indicator. If you have two major chords a whole step apart, it's going to be the upper major chord, the higher major chord, higher up the musical scale, all right? Uh, the same is true for two minor chords a whole step apart. 
D minor in the key of C is Dorian, that's strong. E minor in the key of C is Phrygian, is weak. Not likely E minor will be the root. Now, a good composer can uh, actually trick your ear into thinking this is the root. I mean, that's, that's the art of being a great composer. Uh, I don't want to put any medals on myself. Well, I might as well because I'm about to use the word but. I don't want to put any medals on myself, but. Um, I did write a song where I took the three chord and went to the two chord and made it sound like it was the root. It's a tricky affair. I had to use the major minor key system in order to get that effect. Um, and all, it was actually a, an interesting little song because the actual root was neither. It, the actual root came in the bridge, which was a nice little trick. It set up this kind of tension that until you got to the bridge, you know, you didn't know what the root was, and then boom, you're there. Any case, enough of me bragging about my composition skills. Um, all right, so two minor chords a whole step apart. It's likely that the lower minor chord is going to be the strong one. Want an example? How about uh, Moon Dance? Uh, a minor 7 and B minor 7. And you can hear how strong that A minor is, right? If I try to root B minor, there's a reason again why I'm doing these licks. It's because I've got to train your ears to hear B as root. still searching for the root. And if I play an E minor chord, which is well within the key I'm playing, all of a sudden E minor, it stole the root from those two chords. All right, um, I'm hoping this is making sense. So, again, uh, two minor chords a whole step apart. There is no instance uh, where in the, in the chord family template where you could find two major minor chords a whole step apart, except for here. I mean, here's an A minor, but it goes to a B diminished, so that's not a whole step apart, all right? Again, with minors it gets tricky, because if you're in the major minor key system, the D melodic minor scale contains an E minor, so you have another option besides D Dorian in that case. Uh, again, I'll explain that in the future. Uh, but right now we're dealing with two chord situations. Now if I, if I make the template just, let's do this on an abstract level, okay? I'm going to do just the uh, generic template with the Roman numerals. Now let's say you've got a chord progression uh, C to B flat. All right, now what I said was two major chords are a whole step apart. Well, those are a whole step apart. Uh, the upper one in the, in the uh, alphabet is likely to be the root, most likely to be the root. And if we plug in C as the upper one on the five step, here's B flat, and I could count up C, D, E, and then F. I found my key, I'm in the key of F, all right? 1, 4, 5, B flat is 4, C is uh, 5, F is 1. However, in this case, we're doing the mode, so C will be the root. Um, so we're from the key of F, where C is the root. Do you understand where uh, the problem lies in the language of music because of the notorious major minor key system? I'm in the key of F, but I'm rooting on C. Now, if you walked into a jam session, remembering that we're, we're from the key of F and C is rooted, right? And guys were playing C to B flat to C to B flat, and you walked in and said, what key are we in? They'd go, we're in C. And why? Because C is the root. See, this is the m massive problem that exists in music theory today and in academia, and no one seems to be noticing it, except for moi. Okay, so, no, we are not in the key of C. Just because we have a C root, we are from the we are coming from the key of F, where C is the root. Okay, so you can actually it's a little algebraic, but you could plug in chords to the template. 
all right, to see, let's say you had uh, the chords A minor, B minor, C. Well, A minor and B minor are two minor chords a whole step apart. B minor goes up a half step to C. Is it possible to do that in A minor, B minor, C? Yeah, because three and four are a half step apart. So A minor, B minor, C, A minor is two, that means one is G, we're coming from the key of G. So this is how you do your detective work. There are some situations, as I said, the more chords involved, uh, the more likely you're able to establish the mode. Let me give an example. Um, All right. Uh, all right. We had a problem with A minor and D minor. We could not determine what uh, mode we were in, right? Before in our example. Let's say I had a chord progression that went A minor, D minor, G, A minor, which will sound perfectly acceptable. Well now, there's no question what, what mode and what key. A minor, D minor, do we have a G? We have a G minor, doesn't work. A minor, D minor, G major, that works. So that means we're an A Aeolian from the key of C. All right, the more chords you have, the more capable you are of detecting the modes if, and only if, you're not in the major minor key system because, as you can see, things change up quite a bit. So, um, I don't know, I think that's just basically it. Um, oh, one thing you should, oh, let's talk about a couple more things. Uh, we talked about um, the Santana thing, A minor to D major, right? Well, it's possible to switch roots. In other words, we might not be in A Dorn, we could be in D Mixolydian. Uh, a song that does that is um, that uh, old black water keep on rolling Mississippi moon. Uh, I forget what that's called. Is that old black water? I forget the name of that song, but it's an uh, old Doobie Brothers song. Uh, in that case. <laughs> In a sense, once you've determined the key that these, these chords are coming from, it doesn't matter if you know the mode. You just play the scale from that key, and it will sound as the proper mode for that. But yes, you can reverse the roots, okay? So you, root is something you have to listen for and hear. Key is something you use your mind to, to sort out, okay? Now, one last thing I want to uh, get you involved in is uh, mixing modes, which is a compositional trick that works quite well. The old song, For Your Love. See, 60s music, it was, they had grown-ups writing music for these different bands, you know, the Wrecking Crew and the Motown guys. These guys knew what they were doing until the, the 60s bands insisted that they write their own music. But before then, uh, uh, a lot of these guys were writing music for these pop bands. In any case, we have A minor, C, D, D minor. That song for your love. All right, now let's look at the first three chords and analyze that. A minor, C, D. Do we have a situation where we have an A minor? Now remember, what you could do is, if you want to sort this kind of stuff out on paper, remember, there's only three keys you're going to find an A minor in. So write out the three keys. Now, do you have an A minor, C, D here? Well, no, you have A minor, C, D minor. Here you have uh, A minor, C, D minor. Here you have A minor, C, D major. All right, so that works. But then right after that, it goes to a D minor, A minor, C, D, D minor, right? All right, so let's look at that. We know uh, we have an A minor and a D minor in the key of C, and an A minor and a D minor in the key of F. So which mode would it be? 
Well, remember, one, two, three, the Phrygian step is unlikely. In other words, A minor to root as Phrygian is not likely. All right, but A minor to root as Aeolian is quite likely. So for that moment that the D minor steps in, you switch from, all right, we have A minor, C and D. So along A minor globally, A minor, C and D, you play the G major scale. As soon as that D minor pops in, you play the A Aeolian scale, which is a C major scale, okay? It's that simple. It seems like it, 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 it's going to take a lot of work for you to develop an eye and an ear for this, but trust me on this. The more you do it, it becomes like a snap judgment after a while. I, I've been handed charts and, and, you know, solo through them off the cuff, no problem, because I've developed the ability to, to determine what mode, what mode, what mode, and that helps me a whole bunch. So that's it. That's mixing modes. Uh, a lot of Beatles music has mixed modes. Um, a lot of rock music has mixed modes. It's all, it's all over the place. So that's that for today. I hope you all had a good time with this, and I hope it wasn't too heady. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please notify me. And if I can clarify, I will. Remember, what I told you right now, I have a saying that 80% of music theory is true, and there's always another 20% to come along and negate that. All right, which means that uh, you, your question, use your, use your brains when you formulate your question because try to figure out, wait a second, maybe I'm in the major minor key system. Granted, I haven't taught about that yet, but uh, there's a possibility that your question is arising because you're in a different system. And the, the blues system is a whole other, you know, bag of worms, ball of wax, can of, I forget, can of, yeah. Anyway, take care, guys. Have a great whatever, and I'll talk to you soon. Be well. Peace.